Hello and welcome back to another episode. My name is Tobel. We're harvesting some of our first crops here in New Eden, and it looks like the hops are coming in. Uh, we now have a proper storage area for the hops. Before, we actually weren't accepting hops into this storage bin. So we've made that change now. So hopefully hops start uh, to come in. Actually, Boxer, what happened? So Boxer got trapped somehow, so we'll have to open the door to let Boxer back in. We'll actually just... Uh, let's go ahead and add a door there. That works out. So, Boxer has a door to come in, hopefully. Uh, we've got a couple orders to be processed here in the butcher shop. Let's go ahead and add a floor then to the butcher shop as well, because I think that's something that does help out with preventing infection or, uh, uh, I should say, cost, uh, contamination of meat. Yeah, so when you're cooking... And to be fair, if your butcher shop is in the same room with your electric stove or your stove, you do have a chance to get even more uh, cross-contamination going. But for the moment, I'm okay with that. I don't know if I want to do butchering separate. We could put a little butcher table inside of our eventual frozen. Like, you basically store the corpses in an area of your freezer and then have someone go through and pull the corpse out and butcher it in a little separate building. We could do that once we have a little bit more space. At the moment, I'm not terribly worried about it we're probably going to have some health issues but you know we're going to have someone who gets food poisoning it's not the end of the world it is minorly inconvenient though let's forbid this corpse so we can go ahead and bury the person that's the uh the first person to attack our area i believe the uh, grill of the barkeep the last mistake you'll ever make my friend otherwise i think our little farm's doing good oh no does this blight no this is oh man that i had a heart attack there Blight has a very similar symbol, although I think it's over all the corners of the tile. This is actually corn sprouting from the uh, from the root there, so or from the plant. So we're doing good here. We've got 63% uh, grown. We're almost ready for the potato harvest. Uh, we do need some people to work on gathering, though. Our, our food is just kind of sitting out here. So I'm going to have Logan prioritize hauling these hops away. And you should see the stacking mod in action here because Logan should, while Logan is doing a bunch of things, he's going to say, well, I'm actually going here. I may as well grab anything else I can get that's going the same direction as I am. So Logan's actually got all this stuff stashed inside of his gear, 128 pieces of hops, 45 pieces of wood. So that's all set. Uh, someone else made a good point that, yes, wood does in fact get uh, deteriorates over time because it's outdoors. At the moment, I'm not too concerned because we are going to go through a good deal of wood at the start of the game because we're building up all of our resources. However, normally I wouldn't do this inside because it takes up too much space. However, we have a mod on that lets us have really huge stacks of items. So we could actually turn on wood storage inside the house. And we actually do have it in inside. I'll go ahead and cancel this order outside. If it weren't for the mod that's letting me stack things up to like 750 per stack, then I wouldn't want to have the wood indoors. But because it's only going to take up one or two squares for the moment, I'm okay with that. And it makes a lot of sense not to let things go to waste. Part of the same reason we're not letting our food or our medicine sit outside. We do... Actually, we're a little bit too warm in here right now. Are we not cooling this properly? It looks like the uh, cooler is struggling to maintain that freezing temperature. So we might have to add one more to help things out. I imagine the problem is the frequency with which people go in and out of the freezer is having that air escape into the rooms next door. So some of this could be solved with an airlock. Uh, but I think what I'll do instead is go ahead and put down another freezer. It's not going to break the bank or anything like that. I'll add a, another cooler right next to this one. Hey, we can make beer. Wonderful. Uh, I think I'm going to add on a little bit to this building because we're a little tight on space right now. So I'm going to add a little extension into our cooking area. And part of that's going to become the brewing area. Maybe I'll even... Um, what could I do with that? I'm thinking about the idea about frozen uh, animals and stuff. Uh, the other thing I mentioned that I would do is go ahead and drop some lights around so we can see things. Where is that under? Furniture? Perfect. Ceiling lights. Let's add a couple ceiling lights into these different rooms uh, so that people can have a little bit of coverage here. 
everybody gets a light in their room because we're not living in the Stone Age or anything. Perfect. We'll run power to everything as well. Power up this way a bit, and I think I'll go ahead and drop a couple of these in the hallway so that everyone has enough light to see with. We'll see how that works out once we get everything installed. It's really dark right now, obviously. Um, a lot of dirt is piling up, and we have a lot of hauling jobs that need to be done. I could turn hauling on for everyone as a high priority level. Why don't we give these both a shot? So everyone's going to, apart from Doc, uh, firefight, patient, bed rest, basic, and then they will haul. And if everything is hauled, they'll clean. That's going to take up a lot of time at the start. But my hope is that because we have the job or we have because we have the mod that lets you stack items in your inventory, it might make the hauling job a bit easier to deal with. So there's going to be a, probably about a half day where nobody gets much done because they're just all busy hauling things. Do we have anything queued up? We have microelectronics queued up. Now, someone did mention also that the rate at which you research items is also related to your person's intellectual stat. But uh, we do have a pretty decent intellectual stat right now. The research speed factor is 94% if you look there at the bottom tooltip. So I think that's okay. We'll have Azazel continue doing research. Uh, she's going to spend her night shift kind of carrying a bunch of items around to and fro. How much wood can you carry at once? 76? Is that about your maximum stack due to the weight restrictions? Yeah, like 75 or 76 seems to be as much as one person can carry at one time. Either way, this is going to work out okay. I think we're going to be all right here. We do need some lights in here as soon as possible. I haven't really seen a Windows mod. Is there a Windows mod? I know there's some glass somewhere. I don't think I've seen furniture, though, that kind of lets in light through a wall. Acts as, acts as a window. It'd be nice to liven the place up a bit. All right, Adnamir is grabbing all the outstanding hops that are here that's already been harvested, which is good. That means nothing's going to go to waste. And we're about to have a pretty large potato harvest, so this is going to come in handy. As I mentioned, no one's really doing much of anything. They're going to be doing these because we have a lot of items that we found on the map when we first started. So we'll probably have some steel uh, spread around the map. Some wood is over here, it looks like, as well. So they'll be running around for just a little bit longer, and then I think they're going to go back to the normal job process. We finally did drop this wall, so I'm going to go ahead and put the other wall. Honestly, though, unless someone tries to go get this stuff here, unless someone tries to go get insect jelly, and that might happen on accident. I might one day unforbid everything, and they accidentally run up here and try to get the insect jelly and die. So I'm going to go ahead and wall that off at some point. Someone will have the job to do that. Cool. So we've got everything relatively stacked up. I think they're going to start cleaning soon. And once you stop seeing people run off into the middle distance to get all these items, we'll be back to business. It, Like I said, it will interrupt everyone's workflow to, to sit around hauling things all day. But things will get hauled where they need to go, which is kind of important. Uh, can we prioritize merging all this stuff? That's like... It's probably super annoying for them. So we've got a couple of stacks, 750. We have a lot of wood stocked up right now, which is good. Uh, we'll be able to use a lot of that when we continue to expand our base. Eventually, like I mentioned, we, we do want to try to recruit someone who has the mining skill so we can expand to the north of this area and start going into the mountainside. It'd be really cool if we could straighten this area out and literally make this like a glass wall so people would have a river flowing by them. That'd be so neat. Although I imagine that's a weak point since people seem to be able to just walk up the river and escape. The person that we rescued earlier was able to do that. Who's our crafter, by the way? Kind of Adamir. Adamir, can you... Oh, we actually have no steel? Ooh, that's rough. Let's go ahead and... We do have a mining order for steel or mining order in general here. So I guess we'll just have to wait for that person to become a miner or for everyone to get done with their normal job items to start mining. Unless the next person we see is really, really poor in terms of either their mood or their health, I think I'm going to try to get them and recruit them so we can have someone handle some of our mining and some other of these other like menial tasks like cleaning, 
like hauling, things like that. Not having steel right now is really going to screw us up, so we need to be we need to get this done as quick as possible. Did we also? Oh, we're also uh, not receiving power right now because this new construction has interrupted the power line to the battery. I didn't realize that we were out of steel, so that's going to be a bit of a problem. Cleaning bug blood. Why on earth? Well, they're all they're all coming out. Why would you want to clean this? This should not... Oh, because it's a home area. Okay. Whenever you build something, you set a home area around that item. And so your people will treat that as though it's your home. Because that's like, if you see here, uh, our home area is everywhere that we built, right? Even the uh, even the area that has the the graves. So Azazel needs to get out of here. Hopefully she can uh, clear the area. Interesting that these bugs have come so far out of their nest. I mean, that's one timber wolf that died. We could try to have Azazel pick them off, but they're really, really tough, I will say. Um, we'll let them, they probably will go back into their little nest here. Although I'm amazed that we managed to drop the wood off and not aggro them at some point. Because if they chased Azazel all the way out there, I'm very surprised that our first person to go over there and drop the wood did not pull them as well. So who can we possibly maybe leave on the hauling duty? I think I'm going to bring Azazel back to the research tree. A Logan who is our construction person. Maybe we'll leave Logan and Adnamir on the hauling duty. And we'll put this up for Doc after Doc is done cooking. Because right now we need to get our research going. Even though that's kind of, you know, we're not really getting any active results out of Azazel. It is very important to have that research going at all times. Hopefully once we get electronics, we'll, microelectronics, we will be able to boost up our research speed. It's a trade-off, right? We're not getting anything right off the bat. Uh, but we're kind of trying to, you know, get something that's going to help us more in the long run. So the earlier you get, the more effective it'll be. We really need to get this uh, this mining taken care of. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's castle, cancel any digging order that is not part of steel. And we're going to give everyone the mining priority one. Temporarily. We absolutely have to get some steel coming here. It's going to take them forever, unfortunately, to mine this out. Because no one has any mining skill. But hopefully when they're done, they will drop off a good amount of steel for us. Looks like it's 100 or so per tick. Maybe 80. I'm also going to bump the volume down just a bit too. And I apologize if this is going to be a little bit of a change in the game. Um, I don't want this to be super duper loud. A group of travelers are passing by. Now we could try to kidnap someone here, but it, it's going to provoke the rest of the group, I believe. Unless we catch... Uh, caught someone at the end of their, you know, their patrol or passing through the area. What about faction relations? How are we doing with this faction? Our faction relation with the uh, colon, right? Colon is up to four now because we let somebody go. Uh, this is Histo Histokader, or however you might pronounce that. Hist Histokader. All right. How are we doing with you guys? We are... The, the relation's a little bit funky. It's, it's kind of... I think this is a mod. It's, it's okay. It takes a little bit of getting used to. Uh, we're at zero relationship with them. I don't, really don't want to damage those relations, though. Uh, everyone is still trying to process this steel. How much did we get? We got 32, 36. Uh, we only need 90 or so. So, Adnamir, could you... Or whoever's our, our builder here? Logan, could you go ahead and finish this up so we can have power returning to the batteries again? Okay, cool. Uh, now, any excess power should be going into the batteries. I would hope. Is everything being eaten by this one device? Let's reconnect. Okay, there it went. Uh, we don't have any 
stored energy? Is that because we literally are using every bit that comes through? Or have we not finished the power circuit? No, we did. Oh, does power not transfer here? Across two in a row? Interesting. I don't know. I think it should, but maybe it doesn't. I will make a bit of a, a gap over, just in case that's not the case. Just in case that's not the case. Sure. And Logan, if you would not mind, let's go ahead and have you place down these power circuits, uh, power conduits, rather. I'm going to micro all of these. Okay, we are getting some grid storage. The problem now is that uh, we're connecting it. Everything's basically using up everything that comes in because we only have one active wind turbine. A little uh, less windy. Did I miss? Nothing's blocking this. I think the sandbag is low enough that it's not disturbing the wind turbine. It just happens to be a very low output right now. Hopefully that'll change. Once we get a couple of these, now they're not like the Kenshi turbines where uh, if it's a large turbine and there's very little wind, we won't have any kind of you know coverage at all, thankfully. All right, we've got a little bit of steel. I'm going to go ahead and take the mining order off everyone take it back to six and everyone's gonna get back to their jobs hopefully now with that little bit of steel we've got uh, about a hundred or so we should be able to complete some of the jobs that are hanging around so we've got 20 steel needed for this refrigerator uh, we have a hundred steel completely needed for this wind turbine so maybe we will have to send somebody back onto the job but uh, it is needed didn't expect steel to be such a problem I have to look up the start of the game to see how much steel you normally get because maybe you start with a lot more than I remember Cyberdake's pretty grumpy I don't really blame him I think we forced him to stay outside for a long time recently got insulted uh, rebuffed by Logan has a terrible bedroom and he slept in the cold so he's pretty grumpy overall but the bedroom is terrible because of all the dirt I believe if we take a look at this uh, one of these it's the beauty display or is it the room? There's one that's like a room quality. Here it is. Uh, yeah, the room beauty is at ugly and the room cleanliness is at negative uh, 0.63. So it's it's not impressive as well because it's so small and there's nothing else in it. So overall, he's pretty irritated about the size, <laughs> about the quality of his room. Does he have something? It's gourmand, iron willed, and jogger. There's a jealousy trait where if people don't have the best type of room, they get really, really upset. Uh, so thankfully he doesn't have that, but he still is uh, fairly unhappy about the situation. Can't wait to get another colonist here. We we desperately need a new person uh, to take over some of the responsibilities. so dark we still don't have any lights inside because we're just out of steel can anyone move to a uh, uh, the mining full-time now Logan has skill in it so maybe his job is to craft and to construct so maybe we actually put down mining a little bit lower down in front of crafting and uh, whenever he's not hunting or building things he's out digging and mining that might be what we have to do for a bit because we really just, we need someone to take care of the steel, uh, to get us some steel. So we'll see if Logan does that eventually. Oh, nice. We're starting to get uh, some lighting inside. Now that looks a lot better. We also can go ahead and put down, we'll put down wood floors for now because we just want to have something that's a little bit nicer for everyone to walk on. And it doesn't look so funky that we're, we're literally just, you know, walking around in a place full of dirt. Well, let's go ahead and put some nice wooden floorboards down here. It's going to cost us a bit more wood, but we have a ton of wood right now. We have uh, an easy ability to get more. Let's put down some of this light wood flooring in the frozen uh, into the uh, freezer. And we'll put down something like a, a nice mosaic floor in the dining hall. And maybe just where people stand here, it will put a, a wooden floorboard. Again, it's not exactly pretty. I really prefer to use the stone blocks. But it's, it looks like with the route we're going, we need um, we need a bit more folks ready to do, you know, stone work. We need more people to, uh, or more stones to be available, which we've really not had any yet. We've only been able to do some blocks. Uh, who is our plant person right now? I 
I'm a little confused. Oh, we still have some people on hauling and cleaning. My fault. Let's go ahead and drop those back up to seven or so. It is what it is. We'll have to haul it when we get it, but uh, we actually need to harvest these potatoes before they go bad. So the, the potato crop's about ready to go. Oh, by the way, I, I built this new cooler, dang it, and I didn't set it down to negative two. So let's drop the temperature down to negative two or three. Now we should not have any more problems maintaining that cold temperature. And in fact, if you look at the bottom right, you'll see inside here that it's now a comfortable negative three. So everything is frozen solid. So it's, it's going to be considered fresh, even though that's the overall, I guess, quality or, or almost like the health of it. It's not going to die out. Uh, we have a mad gazelle, so that's going to turn into dinner pretty quickly. Let's get someone outside right now so that we can... Uh, it doesn't basically trap us inside of our house. I'll show you how the interesting the cover system works. When uh, Azazel is near an enemy... Oh, it's not going to work be because we have construction here. I hope you get a shot off before it, like, beats you. There you go. That was a decent shot. Cracked left tibia. Yeah, Azazel's getting her, uh, her butt kicked here. Did Boxer ever learn release? He did not yet. So no one has been training Boxer. In fact, he's lost a bit of tameness. So we are going to have to increase the handling skill at some point. Some people are going to have to take some responsibility and train up our pup so that we don't have, uh, we don't lose him. He'll actually go back to being wild if you don't continually update them with uh, more training. God, this thing is beating the crap out of Azazel. Holy goodness. All right, the rest of you shoot this thing dead, please. Without shooting Azazel, perhaps. Get some revenge, Azazel. Come on. All right, I don't like all these... Uh, oh, we're all next to each other here. God, Azazel like the crap beat out of her. All right, we finally got the damn thing. Uh, let's go ahead and haul... Oh, Cyberdig's already taking it back into the shop. Azazel's going to have to go take a, uh, a power nap here. And hopefully, who's our medic? Is it uh, Logan or... I think it was Cyber, wasn't it? Yeah, Cyber Dink is our medic. So, because he did have that first priority level, he is going to immediately come help out. I don't think he's going to use any medicine, though. Because these are very minor wounds. And in fact, we have somewhere, I think we have a... There's something to say about what type of wound it is. How do we see this? Um, I don't remember offhand. There's basically a way to say that it's an advanced it's kind of a... I didn't mean to click on world. It's going to take a while to generate. Uh, it's a way to say that if the, if the wound is minor, don't worry about it. Just take care of it with your hands, basically. Um... Self-10 bleeding. Self-10. Interesting. We can tell people to self tend. Yes, we want that. I thought there was a way, though, to say... What type of thing it was, basically. So... If it's a minor injury, they, you know, they take care of it up to this point. Then they use a medical kit. Then they use, you know, whatever, whatever. I'll find it somewhere. I feel like it's... I've seen it before. I just don't quite remember where it might be uh yeah we've got some visitors to new eden from where i can't tell yet it's just some random folks uh from the league of histo kader histo -Kader. whatever i happen to say differently every single time hmm could have absolutely sworn there was something here Oh, here it is. Pharmacist settings. Goodness. So this is an overall setting for like if depending on the type of a damage it is, here's what you should do. So if someone is very like a bruise or they've just got a very small cut, use either your hands or use herbal medicine. If they're bleeding, go ahead and use uh, medicine. For anyone else, they use herbal medicine. If it's life threatening, that's when we start to use the glitter world stuff. Although I think at this point, I'm going to say... Um, if it's a life-threatening wound, go ahead and use your regular medicine. We're going to save the Glitter World in case we ever have to do an operation on one of our uh, our colonists. So we really want to have that Glitter World as a last-ditch emergency effort to save someone. Now, if they're very close to you know, dying because of an infection, then yes, absolutely we'll use that. 
Uh, but the pharmacy, the pharmacist option is the one that lets you basically take, uh, you know, what do you want to use for this minor cut? So if they have more than five minor cuts, the injury becomes one step up. So instead of being a minor cut, it goes into the major wounds category if they have five or more because you can bleed out from a ton of minor cuts. That's interesting. Disease immunity margin. Uh, so if a disease has uh, progressed to 75, immunity is at 80. The disease will be classified as life threatening. Yes. So remember how we were talking about that before. The Basically, your immunity and your disease rate chase each other. So as long as you've established a nice margin there, it's not really life threatening, but it is life threatening if the if the uh, the disease winds up getting to a point it's so close to that disease and immunity level. So it it bumps it up a notch and basically will try to use better medicine. Although in this case for us it wouldn't matter, but for a prisoner, although honestly, do we want to blow do we want to blow our good medicine on uh, random prisoners? I don't know yet. All right, so we've got a bunch of visitors here. Uh, we've got Lacour, uh, Pepper, Von Schild, and Bert. So what do you all like to do? We are Gourmand, Greedy. Are any of you a miner? We've got one skill in mining. We are about to get raided. That's convenient because we have a bunch of people who might pitch in here. Uh, unfortunately, none of these people are interested in mining, which is kind of what we need right now. A night owl, a neurotic night owl. High in social skill. This is kind of an average person. Psychically deaf, teetotal, or jealous. Not not the worst traits ever, but really not really that great of skills. They could be a generalist if we happen to recruit this person. They could be someone who hauls a lot of things around and just helps out around the, the house. Um, Bert is a gourmand who has high medical and intellectual skills. Now, that wouldn't be bad because we could have a day shift researcher and a night shift researcher. Um... Greedy Gourmand, again, same problem as I think Adnamir or whoever our chef is would have. Greedy's not all that hard to deal with. You just try to keep them in a really nice bedroom. This might not be a bad person to talk to to possibly recruit. Um, yeah, we will have our social person working on Bert because having a, a night shift and a day shift researcher and two full-time medics would be really, really nice for this colony. Let's see about this raid, though. The blue pig of a crow have arrived nearby. They are attacking immediately. It's just one person. Uh, they do have mining skill. They are an undergrounder and a jogger. Ooh, I really, really, really want to capture this person. I'm hoping we don't kill them. Because as soon as we capture them, uh, we'll be good to go. And we'll be able to eventually convert them. I mean, so it's, it's kind of guaranteed. It's not always. Uh, but for the most part, you shouldn't have too many issues converting people. Since they're attacking right now, let's have everyone get up, except Azazel, since she's still recovering from all of these injuries. Although Azazel does have a rifle. Uh, you're in severe pain, though. And there is a chance that this guy's going to get off a shot. I don't, I don't want to risk Azazel. I think everybody with a pistol, between a pistol and a rifle, will make this happen. When this guy gets closer, are you attacking our self-tamed doe? That's so funny. Um, we have a doe that just got self-tamed a minute ago. Uh, or Gazelle, sorry. Let's set a zone here. Uh, we'll set this zone to the side. To be... Okay, this is going to be an animal zone. So expand the animal zone to about here. And I think if we can go to here, we can assign the animal to the animal zone. So we'll assign that Gazelle to the animal zone. And I think it like immediately was like, oh... I'm not in the right spot. I should move. And sure enough, it's actually going to go up river and just relocate itself. It's a very, very smart gazelle. <laughs> um, I don't remember if the bow outranges the pistol or not. I think it does. So when worm gets close to us, we're probably going to charge out with the with the pistols and uh, try to get a couple close shots, but only after he makes that hit his uh, actual first shot. We'll see. We could probably try to flank him. He's actually a bit stuck. Okay, here he comes around the side. All right, we'll see how long this takes uh, for him to get over. We'll keep Adnamir behind the sandbag. He might go for cover here on the side. There's really not a whole lot of cover. Okay, the pistols are close enough to shoot from here. Let's back everyone up and make a line. 
He's taking cover behind a tree. So it's basically going to be a, a bit of a shootout. I'm going to have Logan hop over the sandbag, take some cover. I'm going to move Cyberdink down a notch. And I guess I'll have... Maybe I'll have Adnamir plank off to the side here to try to hide behind a tree. Now, he's actually really, really wounded. How about... Okay, I'll tell you what. How about we try, we all rush in and try to melee this person? I really want to capture him. I don't want him to die. Did he lose anything really vital? He got a scratch. Hopefully, we won't take an arrow to the eye and die here. We're basically just beating the crap out of this person. Who's, who's winning our little battle here? He actually has higher melee scale than most of us, but I'm hoping... Okay, perfect. So he went down. So now what we're going to do is a couple things. We need to... Uh, let's see. Azazel is over here. We need to make this medical bed. So that way Azazel will want to go into the bed. I'm going to have to turn this room to a prisoner room. So I'm going to then capture Worm. We're going to take him into the prisoner room and drop him off. Azazel is going to kind of relocate over here to the uh, the bedroom. Did we want to still try to recruit Bert? I kind of do, but it's it might be a little bit challenging with the current situation. We need to drop another bed down fairly soon, too. Uh, let's do... Because once you make a prisoner room, the entire all the beds in that room become prisoners. So we can't have it split between prisoners and anyone else. I mean, we could try to recruit Bert. We, I guess we don't need a spare bed right now. We could, you know, just have them hot bunk or something. Uh, so I do want to try... This person's actually pretty happy, although they've only talked to one person. So it looks like they, some people need more than one person to talk to them. Let's have Azazel also talk. Are you wounded already, Azazel? Can you maybe go talk to Bert? Is it Bert, right? Bert was the, yeah, the nighttime person. Um, so what it's basically telling us is that we, the hospitality is high enough, I think. However, they don't know enough of us to recruit. So somebody else has to befriend Bert. It's like the, the Sims thing. You have to have like four friends in order to, uh, to get the next job promotion. Okay, enough friends to recruit. Bert cannot be recruited. We are going to try to recruit. Again, that medical and intellectual background is really, really strong. Uh, who could try to recruit? Who's our other socialite? Adnamera, what are you up to? You're healing up. Can you please, perhaps, go try to recruit Bert? We really can't. I think there's a, a timer, basically. When someone uh, interacts with someone else, you have to wait uh, you know, 10, 20 minutes of in-game time maybe an hour or something like that before you can talk to them again. Hopefully we'll be able to talk to them again before they leave. Maybe they have to be awake actually to do that. Nope, not really. Both Azazel and Adnamir are down for the count. And both of those folks are the, uh, <laughs> the social, the socialites here. Okay, cool. We've got that trigger now. So let's go ahead and have Adnamir try to recruit Bert. Do you want to join our, our hut? Oh, hell yeah, we do. Awesome. So now we have a new person. Bert, welcome. Um, can I rename people? <laughs> can I? Oh, can I not actually re rename people? There we go. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's. Uh, we'll decide that between this episode and next. Maybe they'll pick up a convenient nickname that also happens to be the nickname of one of our wonderful subscribers in the Discord. So we can make that happen. So Bert now needs their own room. Although... Adnamir is... Who's sleeping with whom here? Oh, no one has a lover. Um, I thought somebody had a lover. Doesn't like Logan or... Did they break up? I thought somebody was... I thought somebody was having a relationship here. Did I miss that down the road? Pepper chatted with Lovin with Logan. <laughs> I think that's one of the random people that stopped in. Um... Cool, so we're going to try to add a new room here. Oh, guess what? We actually do have a new miner. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a couple. Oh, we don't yet. We haven't recruited him. Yeah, we actually need... Uh, he, we did heal him. We did stop all that bleeding. And we are trying to take care of him in, in terms of feeding him and, and stuff like that. Uh, recruitment difficulty is 38, and he has 10 resistance. So what this means is every time someone interacts with Worm, once Worm regains consciousness, we'll start reducing his resistance levels and eventually he'll cave and join the colony 
but we just have to keep sending people to him over and over and over again. That's not a very high resistance level, so that shouldn't take all that long. Unfortunately, that means we don't have a spare uh, miner available yet. Let's drop the wall between the kitchen and this other building. I suppose, temporarily, we could just kind of add a very small room. I mean, that's two by two. We'll add a, we'll add a very small room onto the end of the, uh, in the entire area here. It'll be kind of like a little addition. And uh, that should keep somebody happy. Okay, so we've got a new recruit. Now, of course, that does make the chief of the uh, Histokader tribe upset because we basically stole their person. Oops, sorry. Well, you should have treated them better. We are short one bed. We know that. Lacour is sitting here, like, staring at Azazel. That's a little bit creepy. I think they're actually chatting because Azazel's uh, trying to medically get better. Not at all a little bit disturbing. What is Bert up to? Bert, you know what? I think I want to... I need to uh, micromanage you a bit. Let's have you priority doctor and priority on research. Now, the nice thing is... Bert is not a night owl, while Azazel is a night owl. So, when Azazel is sleeping, Bert is going to be up and about doing their uh, research stuff. So, that's a wonderful thing. We also have another uh, doctor, too, which is going to be super, super helpful. I'm going to give Bert a couple of high-level jobs to help out with in case you know he suddenly just finds himself without something to research. Or maybe Azazel is working a long shift. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll have Bert do that, but now Bert should go off either to the medical group. Yeah, he's actually tending a prisoner or the medic, uh, the medical job. I feel really bad about this. Uh, I'll tell you what, why don't you, well, no one really has a free bed right now. So that, that's just going to be our life until we're able to build this little add on. No worries. I think we're going to be okay here. Uh, worm is going to be broken eventually. So we'll have a nice new miner. I think the first thing we'll do is probably set Bill to, or uh, uh, Worm, to expanding our living quarters into the mining area, kind of eat into the mountainside. And I, what I'd like to, what I mentioned before, what I'd like, I think, is to have this all get cut out. And so we'll basically have a wooden structure on the outside, which then runs directly into the mountain. And then the mountain becomes kind of our internal little home area. Uh, everyone gets a five by five room. We can kind of expand down here. I don't think these are walls uh perfectly squared off areas normally indicate old constructions that contain possibly ancient dangers so if you ever see an area that is kind of has you know 90 degree angles and it looks like it's a building it it's probably not the greatest thing in the world uh we're, there's no examples of that that's interesting normally you have somewhere on the map that you can tell is a an ancient danger it's basically like this it's got a it's got an actual marble wall or a slate wall and if you get close to it, your person will say suddenly, oh, they detect an ancient danger in this place. And normally that comes with some, you know, either there's uh, some people, well, I, I don't, maybe I won't spoil it in case we come across it. Basically, there's a, a good chance of getting something good and something that's going to be a little bit challenging to overcome. Okay, so this has been an okay episode. Nothing too dramatic has happened other than the one raid. We are getting attacked fairly regularly, but it's still relatively small. And we're taking advantage as soon as we can of recruiting people and expanding our base. And now that we've got a second person on research, I think that's going to help us out a lot in terms of uh, getting weaponry, advanced weaponry, and everything like that unlocked. Uh, that way we can defend our base a little bit better. Down the road, I might also look into the idea of building a bridge across this area. I'll tell you what, can I build a floor, a uh, tiled soil over, no, I can't build a tiled soil over granite. But I bet we could build a wind turbine over this. So perhaps we make our farm area over here. And that opens up all of this area for construction. We could actually nuke everything in this general vicinity and open it up for either construction or we start making some advanced kill boxes. Uh, okay, so they were disappointed, obviously, because I think we basically stole someone uh, out of their tribe. But hey, you know what? You should feed them better food. And they were very upset about it. We've been talking to Worm nonstop, so I think pretty soon 
worms resistance should break probably next episode at some point thank you guys so much for joining me we've got a psychic soother which is going to make everyone a little bit good uh happier in their mood but thank you for joining me for this third episode uh has it been the third episode third episode here of rim world i do hope you're enjoying this series and i do uh you know hope to bring you a lot more content for rim world because it's a super super fun game if you all have suggestions for mods please let me know in the RimWorld chat on our Discord. Just go ahead and drop me a note. Tag me by doing at Tobal Plays, and or on on Twitter as well. Just let me know what kind of mods you're looking into if you're interested in, in one particular thing. I think someone mentioned the double door or triple door mod. I might look into that next episode just to see if it'll fit with our kind of design. But remember, this area is kind of temporary. I think we're going to make all of this into a bigger base down the road. So we might move things over. Can we build um, a bridge by default? Hey, we can build a bridge. Perfect. Uh, so this actually might look kind of cool, having a little bridge that people have to cross over in order to farm and everything like that. We could lock it off, make sure no one gets into it. Yeah, lots of options here. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this episode. I do hope to see you again in the next one. Stay tuned.